In this part, we're going to create a Pac-Man game, and we're going to do that by using a circle. If you don't know what Pac-Man is, I sent a link. Uh, click on it and enjoy what Pac-Man is. Discover Pac-Man for the very first time. I'm going to make a new composition, and I'll just call it Pac-Man. I'm going to use the circle tool. And then I'm going to align this circle to the center by having a line. If you don't see a line, window align. Click there and click here. So that should be the center of our canvas. Next part, I really need two semicircles in order for this to happen. When I click off, you can see that the pivot point's up there. I'm going to move the pivot the anchor point to the center. I have snapping on, so it's snap right to the center. Next, I'm going to zoom in. And I'm just dragging it around a little bit to center it. Next, I'm going to pre-comp this layer, which is really a Pac-Man shape. So I'll just call it Pac-Man shape. And the reason I'm doing this is so I could draw a mask on top of this. So right-click, pre-compose, comp, that's fine as a name. Next, I'm going to pick up the rectangle tool. And with this layer selected, it's going to act as a masking tool. So there's my mask. I did it. And I need to hold down the shift key and drag a little more. So I need these points. Now it's not going to be a perfect square, but that's OK. So since it's no longer a perfect square, I'll just select these ends of the mask as well. I'll just hold down the shift key and press the up arrow to move them in. I'm working on the mask layer. All right, so that's half our Pac-Man. So that's Pac duplicate. And I'm going to get the upper half to exist by just flipping the mask around, inverted it. So now we have our top and bottom Pac-Man. And I'll call this one Pac-Man top to make it a little easier to figure out what I'm selecting. And this will be Pac-Man bottom. You can see a little line going through it at this resolution, but when I zoom in, it's gone. So you have to sometimes zoom into your artwork to figure out what's real and what's not real. 100% should be real. All right, so here I need Pac-Man to open and close its mouth over and over again as it gobbles up and runs through the maze. I'm going to do that on the rotation level. So I'm going to select both of these layers. And it can be as many layers as you want. I'll press the R key. And when I key at frame zero, you can see that I only had to press the stopwatch on the top one and all the other ones will fall in line. It didn't matter which layer. So if I select it on the bottom one, you can see that pressing stopwatch on the bottom one also keys on the top. Then we'll say roughly around, I don't know, 12 frames in, and I typed in 16, I meant to type in 12, is when it closes its mouth again. So I'll click here, and when I do that, it inserts a key. I'll zoom into my timeline so I can see a little clearer. You can see that each segment of the timeline is actually a little square like an Excel sheet, All right? So I'll go back to frame six, and this is where Pac-Man has to open its mouth. On rotation, I'm going to deselect both layers because one has to go up, the other one has to go down, and not that way. We're saying Pac-Man is only going to go around this way for today. And let's say negative seven degrees looks good on that angle. So if it's negative 7 degrees up, it'll be positive 7 degrees down. And maybe that's way too wide for that. I'll try 60 degrees. And maybe negative 60. And let's look how our Pac-Man's doing. Oh, it only ate once, and then it wasn't hungry anymore. I'll press the N key here to shorten the workspace, so I'll loop 
through this over and over again. A little slow, but I think it'll be okay for our needs. Maybe Pac-Man isn't that hungry right now. All right, well, I really just don't want to make this happen here, being this animation. I need this to go on for a very long time. Well, this is our current state of our Pac-Man, and within these 12 frames, it gobbles over and over again. So I'm going to go under Composition, Composition, Settings, and cut this layer down to 12 seconds. Sorry, 12 frames. And maybe, let's see, and that should do it, because by the time it reaches here, it goes back to the closed state. Great. So I'm going to pre-comp this into a new composition called Gobbling Pac-Man. Since this is the total animation for this, which we created with the rotations. And I'm going to go under, again, composition, sorry. I could go into layer, but right click with both of these layers selected. Pre-compose. And call this. Let's say Goblin Pac-Man, it's hungry state. Click OK. I'm going to make this layer, which is currently the Pac-Man layer, a lot longer. Since I shrunk it to make the Goblin section, so this way this Goblin is only 12 frames long. I'm going to go back to my original composition, composition settings, and set it back to 30 seconds, which is 900 frames. Or you can type in 30 if you're in the other way of looking at time. All right, so I have all this extra space and time where there's no Pac-Man. That's okay, we'll make Pac-Man appear across all that by using time remapping. Time remapping is good when paired with loop out, which we're about to do, to repeat a layer's animation or video clip animation over and over again. Time remapping can also be used to scale up time or slow down time, and we can have multiple keys, so we can make that going back in time and forward in time effect. But here, I'm just going to select the layer and go under Layer time enable time remapping which puts a key at the beginning of this segment and at the end of this segment and then disappears and the reason it disappears is because i have to stretch out the rest of this clip and a quicker way to stretch out the rest of this clip it's going under here all the way at the end of time and holding down the option right bracket will extend that layer's length again option right bracket but still, it'll just do nothing. Why? Well, even though now we see the Pac-Man and gobble once, it's not repeating that function. In order to repeat that function, we need to loop time over and over again. With time remap exposed, I'm pressing the Option key on the stopwatch to bring up our ability to type in code. I'll start typing in the word loop, L-O-O-P, and there's different loops. Today, we're going to be using the loop out Notice the capital O and out and the parentheses here. I'll just click loop out here so there's no way I'll misspell it. And I'll put a semicolon at the end for good practice. Now we'll have our continuously gobbling Pac-Man. 